When you think of South and Central Florida, high-speed rail may not be the first thing that comes to mind. But that started to change in 2018 with the launch of Brightline, a high-speed passenger rail service that can move riders through the Sunshine State at speeds of up to 125 miles per hour. Brightline's full route currently connects Miami to Orlando with plans for expansion to Tampa. In this video, I traveled a one-way shorter portion of that route. With a flight landing in Miami and a cruise leaving from Fort Lauderdale, we needed a way to commute between the two areas. So we thought, why not try Brightline? Since the pricing was good, we actually ended up booking their premium class of service. So come along with me as we check out what it's like to go first class on high-speed rail in South Florida. We arrived bright and early and post-red-eye flight exhausted at the Miami Central Station. The station itself opens at 6 a.m. weekdays and 5 a.m. on weekends, but don't expect the in-station amenities to be open that early. Shops and restaurants were shut tight when we arrived. You enter the main lobby on the ground floor. It's a sleek, modern space, very clean and spacious. We travel during the holiday season, hence all the Christmas decorations. On this level, you'll find the automated ticket kiosks in case you need to purchase or make changes to your booking, although you can of course use the Brightline app, website, or visit guest services, which is across from the kiosks. Guest services is also where you can drop off your checked baggage if you are traveling with any. Last thing to note on this level is Joe in the Juice Cafe, which did offer a nice variety of food and drinks. Though if you're riding premium, you'll get complimentary snacks and beverages in the upstairs lounge. So with that, let's head up the escalators to the second level. At the top of the escalator is another cafe, although it was still closed when we entered the ticketed area. To enter this section, you scan your ticket barcode through the touchless turnstiles and pass through security. Important to note that you can only enter the ticketed area two hours prior to your departure. We didn't know that and ended up stuck on the boring side of the station for a bit before we could enter. The first part of the waiting area is for all passengers. We didn't spend much time here as we headed straight for the premium lounge, but it's a nice space. There's a snack and souvenir market, I really got a kick out of these toy trains, and of course, there is also a full bar. The escalators up to the tracks on the third level are also found here, along with large information boards. There's free Wi-Fi in the waiting lounge as well as throughout the station and on board the trains. We are here for the first class experience though, so let's head over to the premium lounge. But before we enter, let's take a quick look at what the differences are between the classes of service on Brightline. There are only two classes, which Brightline calls Smart and Premium. For the higher price point, a premium ticket will get you a slightly larger seat, complimentary seat selection, a free checked bag, an included $10 Uber voucher for any transportation needs to and from the station, priority boarding, complimentary drinks and snacks on board the train, and most importantly, at least for us, access to the premium lounge, which included unlimited snacks and drinks prior to boarding. You scan your ticket barcode through the turnstiles to enter the premium lounge. It's a quiet, upscale space, less crowded and a little calmer than the main waiting area. The unlimited food and drinks and comfortable seating were our main draw since we were coming from an overnight flight. The food was simple but plentiful, continental breakfast style, with the spread featuring things like yogurt, pastries, fruit, muffins, cold cuts, and bagels. There was coffee, tea, and bottled drinks available, as well as beer and wine on tap. I figured since it was day one of vacation and my internal clock was all messed up from the flight, might as well have some breakfast wine. Truly rosé all day. The lounge had several seating options. There were plenty of couches with little tables, and they have charging stations built into the furniture, which is a really nice touch, so there's no fighting with anyone for outlets. There are a few desks if you really need to get some work done, plus a bunch of these mid-century style swivel egg chairs. We ended up grabbing a couple of those and made that home base until the train was ready to leave. They faced the window, so we got to watch the rain fall over Miami as we waited. There's a nice big train timetable board in here as well, so you can keep an eye on all the departures. Speaking of departures, let's take a quick look now at schedules and prices, since you may be wondering at this point what this all costs. The route I took, connecting Miami to Fort Lauderdale, has about 17 departures during the week and up to 19 on the weekends, with trains running roughly every 40 minutes to an hour. As of April 2024, weekday trains in this direction start around 6.50 a.m., with the last one departing around 10.50 p.m. 
The last train in the opposite direction leaves Fort Lauderdale around 11.40 p.m. There are also sometimes later trains on weekends or for special events. For cost comparisons, using a random date in May as an example, smart ticket prices vary from $29 to $54 one way, depending on the train you select, but the premium cabin is currently priced at $79. Keep in mind these schedules and numbers are just examples for the Miami to Fort Lauderdale portion of the route, which is a little under 35 minutes. If you're looking to go further up the route or all the way to Orlando, whether that's round trip or one way, both classes of service will be higher. Brightline's website is super user friendly and checking dates, prices, and schedules for whatever you need is very easy. After a couple of hours in the lounge, it was finally time for the main event, boarding the train. Brightline is still pretty young, so the trains in their cabins are all in tip-top shape. The premium cars feature 21-inch leather seats, three across per row. There are several seating configurations, individual, double, or quad groupings. We chose a double with a table in the middle. The table had a pop-up charging station and an expansion piece that pulled out. The car wasn't anywhere near full, so there was plenty of space to spread out, and the overhead storage here is plentiful. There are small screens in the ceiling over the aisle that show the upcoming stations. After a few minutes to get settled, we were off. Farewell to Miami and on to Fort Lauderdale. It was going to be a quick ride, only a little over 30 minutes, so wanted to get in a little bit of everything. I watched the world go by for the first few minutes, although the views in this area aren't terribly exciting as the train is traveling through a dense urban area. It didn't take long after departure for the service to start. First, we received wrapped scented towels to freshen up with, which was a nice little touch. A cart came around to offer complimentary snacks and drinks, and I believe a full meal is included if you are traveling all the way to Orlando. Since the ride was short and I wanted time to explore the train, I just got a little croissant. Plus, I'd just spent two hours nonstop eating in the premium lounge, so I wasn't very hungry. I did find a full version of the paid menu in our seat pocket if you want to take a look to get an idea as to what kind of food is served on board. After scarfing down the croissant, I went for a little walk to see the rest of the train. I mainly wanted to see what the Smart Class cars looked like in order to get a comparison. Smart Class is also really quite nice. Seats are just a couple of inches smaller and they go four across instead of three, with different configuration options as well. As the baseline economy product, I was really impressed. The second spot I wanted to check out was of course the bathroom. It was simple, spacious, and clean, really, all that you need a train bathroom to be. By the time I headed back to my seat, we were already pulling into Fort Lauderdale. 33 minutes went by very quickly. And with that, my ride on Brightline came to a close. So what's the verdict on Brightline and its premium class of service? Well, as an overall experience, it was great. I don't live in or commute in South Florida, but I've seen plenty of feedback from locals who are appreciative of this as an alternate option to driving or flying between Orlando and Miami. And from a train nerd perspective, it's a fun thing to check out. Brightline is the only privately owned and operated intercity passenger railroad in the United States, and it's the fastest train in the US outside the Northeast. It's just a cool thing to try if you're in the area. As for the premium product, it's a lovely experience if you can take advantage of all the perks. It worked well for us since we wanted a nice indoor place to relax and eat after our overnight flight and not have to worry about finding a comfortable place to kill time in an unfamiliar city in potentially bad weather. We also looked out on the pricing of our tickets. Would I pay the full $79 for this 33 minute ride if I didn't really need all the perks it came with? No, I'd stick to smart class. But overall, it was a lovely experience, and as someone who almost never travels above the economy level, it was a fun little treat. I hope you enjoyed the ride on Brightline. If you made it this far into the video, then please do give it a like, and I hope you'll subscribe to my channel to join me on all my future travel adventures. There's lots more to share for 2024. Thanks again for joining me on Brightline, and see you next time.